handle having a mean son or a firstborn who's really rough on the family? Uh, we had a great question from David in our Five Minute Fatherhood group. He said, I would like some advice on a son who is constantly mean with their siblings. How do you reach the heart to help them change and realize that how they're acting is going to make them end up with no relationships when they are older? Um, so David, this is a great question. This is a huge uh, thing to address, particularly when they're the oldest and if they're mean with their younger siblings. Um, this is something that is really important to nip in the bud. So um, there's a couple of things that I find really important to do when one of your kids is just sort of creating that kind of um, mean and rude culture. So I love what you said the first time, like reaching their heart. Yeah. That is huge. Um, and so it's really important that, uh, that, that they respect you, that when, that you cultivated a, a place in which when your voice is, that's something that they really respect. Um, we talk a lot about that in the skill of father, just different ways of like, of elevating the sort of the weight of your voice in the ears of your children. Um, but a big part of that process is to make sure that <clears throat> that you are keeping your word and that that when you're disciplining your children that you create this sort of large gap between being the fun dad and being the coach and sort of disciplinarian mm -hmm. dad. Sometimes you have to dial up both of those at the same time. Uh, we talk through how that really increases the volume and the heaviness or weight of your voice critical, especially with a son who is like, really aggressive with their siblings or with your wife. Um, we have a whole uh, talk we did on yeah. about what, what do you do when your son tries to over, over, uh, <laughs> throw your, your wife? wife. Yeah. Similar, similar struggle. Um, another thing that I think is really critical here is that you're, you train your son to repent from the heart. Um, what this means is that you don't want to, with a mean uh, uh, child in the home, you don't want to have the quick, like, say you're sorry, say you're yeah, sorry. Totally. That's not going to cut it. They have to grieve what they've created in the home. And so there's a process that involves serious and consistent consequences uh, and then um, really causing them to understand the implications uh, of what they're creating in the home and repenting through that process. And so um, so what I want to make sure is, is that is being done to a soft heart. The way I do that mm -hmm. is to make sure that the consequence really reaches their heart, that they, even if they don't you know, some of your, some of these kids really are hard to discipline. Uh, they will resist it a lot. And so you really have to dial up those consequences, um, so that they, they do, um, even if they're not empathetic towards their siblings, they're empathetic towards themselves. Yeah. Um, that actually helps. There's a, there was a big study done on, on empathy in children. And one of the things that it said was that our intuition for creating empathy in children is to say, see how badly you hurt Sally. Yeah. Like she's really hurt right now. That's our, that's our intuition. Um, but with a certain personalities, kids that are really aggressive, um, that doesn't give them empathy. That just continues to help them sort of figure out their power game. Yeah. Like, um, oh, I did hurt him. I can yeah. use that. Yeah. <laughs> what, what actually creates empathy is, which is counterintuitive is, is when they suffer for what they did to other people. Mm -hmm. In other words, a, a good discipline structure that they respect. Um, and so this was done with prisoners there, there's a lot of good evidence for this. Um, and so when, when you're trying to create empathy with, with a child, make sure they really feel the consequences. Um, and that over time, then you direct that frustration they have with having to absorb the consequences for their behavior. And that's the good time to say, okay, let's, l let me show you the reason why, you know, you lost that privilege or the reason why you you're suffering under this consequence is because you created that for yeah. your siblings. Um, and that takes a lot of work when you have a kid who's struggling with this. The first mm -hmm. thing I would tell you guys is, uh, it's going to, you cannot be passive and this is going to be a lot of work. Like and do not give up, uh, do not go passive. This is, you have to win this one. Um, and it, it's going to take time and consistency and creativity. Um, but those are a couple of things that you have to really lean into, but yeah, how yeah. would you talk about this? No, I would agree. And the only thing I would add too is just even drilling down that more practically that we've tried to do is exactly what you said. If you have to make the consequence <clears throat> anytime there's, I want to show our kids that being rude or being mean or being hurtful or kind of having that. Uh, and I even do this sometimes if the, if they're getting really intense with their like, no, that's mine, you know, don't touch. I don't want you to play with me or whatever is then is, is I want them to see that that breaks relationship, right? That yeah. like that actually you're isolating yourself like in a bad way. That's not going to like reap mm -hmm. good benefits. Kind of like what he even says, right? In the thing where he says, yeah. make them end up with no relationships when they're older. That's right. So one way we try to show that consequence is, you know, um, I try to make it where like, you know, I'm not going to, maybe it's time out or whatever, but usually I'll just have them like sit inside or just sit with me or whatever. Wow. 
as the other kids are having fun mm-hmm. or while the other kids are outside yeah. scootering or whatever, you know? Yeah, to show them that. Exactly. Like you're missing out on this relational communal joy that everyone's having yeah. because of the way you are choosing to act, right? And then I usually always, and the thing, language we always use in our family too is like, you know, saying you're entitled or saying it's yours or being mean or whatever. It's kind of this trick. I would say it's like this trick that like it's not going to do what you think it's going to do in that moment. Mm. And your heart will feel better and love will feel better if you like extend yourself to that person. Mm. And and so, yeah, so I think showing that, doing a consequence where they're kind of realizing they're missing out on like the orbit of flourishing, you mm. know what I mean? The yeah. orbit of joy and that they're not like, because a lot of times people are being mean or stealing or whatever kids are thinking like, cause I'm going to take that orb. I'm going to take the center of joy and party and fun and I'm going to have it for myself. When it's like, no, no, that's out here. And you are kind of now outside that orbit, yeah. you know? And I think that's a helpful way to try to communicate. And if you do that over and over again, I think they start to realize like, oh yeah, this is kind of a, what's it? You're not even putting a harsh consequence. It's just like the consequences is the, 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 how it starts playing it's out natural. is the consequence. Yeah. That's it's right. a natural consequence. So yeah. that's what I would say. Yeah, that's good. And if you guys, if you want, need more tools to figure out even consequences, corrections, a whole training system, this is so critical for the more challenging kids. I really encourage you guys to grab our masterclass, the skill of fatherhood. The first module, the longest module, the most details is how to train your mm-hmm. kids. Very, very, very few fathers have a have a really thought out system for training their kids. And so this kind of stuff can get really overwhelming really fast. And so we get super practical. We give you lots of different ways we think about corrections, consequences, rewards, yeah. how to really shape behavior, which we believe is critical at this young mm-hmm. stage. Um, and so we talk about that. There's also two other modules, how to coach your kids is the second one, how to build a multi-generational family is the third one. So pick that up, go to familyteams.com and check out the skill of fatherhood um, and use the code DADS, D-A-D-S, to get 10% off.